we're very happy to have Hong Lu from MIT, who is going to talk about emergence of space and time and holography. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot for the invitation. Uh, yeah, it's great to be back here in Bra. And uh, so, um, something. Oh, did you try both buttons up, up and down? Yeah. Sometimes you have to advance your slide once. Yeah, yeah, I've checked. Oh, maybe here because of the recording. Yeah, right. Try advancing once with your Okay. Okay, good. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so this is work uh, based, uh, based on recent work done with uh, Sam uh, 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 Lloyd Hauser. Uh, so appeared in several papers. So uh, one of the outstanding question in holography, he said, if I give you, say, suppose, so if suppose I give you, um, say, this is the, say, uh, a vacuum ABS, so I give you a local region in the box, which does not touch the boundary, okay, say some causal diamond in the box. And how do we actually describe uh, using boundary theory, the physics inside or related to this region, okay? Say, uh, um, say, how do we describe the interior time evolution? Uh, how do we describe the, the causal structure associated with this region? And also, uh, how do we uh, describe the kind of time which can take you, say, outside this region into, yes, say, into other part of the ADS? So such kind of questions can only be formulated sharply in the G-Newton goes to zero limit because the finite G-Newton and space-time fluctuates, then it's hard to make this kind of geometric uh, statement and the causal statement uh, uh, very sharp, okay? So, uh, uh, so this corresponding to N equal to infinity limit of the CFT. So the goal of the talk is that we are outline formalism for addressing such kind of questions uh, uh, in the in holography. Okay. And so first, let me just tell you the 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 final slogan I want you to um to get. So I want to advocate that the box space time locality is actually a geometrization of emergent boundary type three one of volume and sub edge. Okay. So so yeah, the statement uh, sounds a little bit cryptic. So let me just slightly evaluate uh, here. So what I'm going to say is that there are many emergent type 3 one volume sub algebras in the boundary CFT in the large air limit. And then they can be one-to-one -one correspondence with the box space-time region. And then we can use the uh, properties of such uh, emergent type 3 one algebras to uh, uh, say to describe, uh, to describe emergence uh, of the geometric notions in the box such as horizons times causal structure. Okay. And uh, so, so we will call this the sub-algebra sub-region duality. And this generalizes the, uh, the familiar case of the sub-region sub-region duality, so uh, often called the entanglement wedge uh, reconstruction. So of course, there's a huge amount of work in here, and this was some of the earlier, uh, uh, the earliest uh, work. And uh, so, um, yeah, so, so let me just uh, remind you a little bit the story regarding this sub-region, sub-region duality. So consider now a time slice uh, uh, of the ADS and this circle is the boundary and the inside is the block. So if you consider boundary region R and then you can say consider the RT surface associated with that region, uh, which give you the entanglement entropy of that region. And then this region uh, uh, is called the entanglement wedge, this ER. So the uh, statement of the um, uh, 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 sub-region sub-region duality is that the uh, the physics in the uh, local physics in the entanglement wedge should be equivalent, yeah, should be fully understandable, say in terms of the um, that in the uh, sub-region law. Okay. So this is a very powerful statement, and played a very important role in many uh, development like quantum error corrections, uh, page curve, etc. And uh, so, uh, but such a discussion only applies for very special bulk regions, okay, which corresponding to say the uh, uh, bounded by the RT surface. So if we want to ask questions regarding this kind of causal diamond in the bulk, 
and then uh, this uh, certainly does not apply. Okay. And uh, but it, if we slightly generalize this language, uh, we can actually uh, now describe this in the following way. So, so equivalently, we can formulate this equivalence as the equivalence between the operator algebras, uh, operator boundary algebra in this region R, uh, which I call, uh, say, XR, and the operator algebra for the Bach theory in the region ER. Okay. So, so this uh, sub-region sub -region duality, we can also formulate it in terms of algebraic language, in terms of the equivalence of the edge. Turns out that using this algebraic language actually give you a much more general language to talk about such kind of duality. And now we can actually uh, uh, describe this kind of region uh, uh, using algebras. Okay, again, using the equivalence of the algebras. And now those algebras, they don't necessarily have geometric uh, 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 correspondence, okay? And so the special thing about the sub-region, sub-region duality is that this algebra have some kind of geometric uh, uh, interpretation. But in general, this kind of edge, uh, the algebra which describes this region uh, in the boundary theory don't have a geometric description. Okay. And so, uh, um, yeah, so this language is more general and uh, in the sense more powerful. And yeah, so uh, so uh, so we need to use sub sub algebra sub region duality to describe this kind of region. Okay, so so let me first say a few words regarding the monument algebras. So soon after the development, say, of quantum mechanics and its mathematical foundation using Hilbert space, Monument and Murray the initial task of classifying operator algebra for all quantum systems. So this is very natural from mathematician point of view because the um, physical observables um, are, are important, so we should classify them, okay? As I will not go into details of the uh, classification, uh, let me just say that the, uh, these so-called monument algebras are classified into type three, three types, okay? Then there are, are further uh, uh, subtypes, okay? Uh, so they are type one, type two, and type three. So the one we learned mostly in your quantum mechanical classes or uh, we teach in quantum class, Quantum mechanical classes, I owe the type one algebras. Okay. And uh, uh, type two and type three, they're more exotic. So even though when when Volume and Murray, when they initiated classify this volume algebras, it's just purely from a mathematician point of view, they just want to, yeah, uh, uh, mathematician classify everything. Okay. But but in hindsight, from the modern perspective, what they were doing. It's essentially the classification of entanglement patterns of quantum systems. Okay, so, so von Neumann algebra actually a classification provides a powerful way to understand entanglement patterns of a quantum system. Uh, so let me just motivate a little bit this sentence. So let's just remind you that, that normally say, say let's consider quantum system, say we divide it into two half, uh, two parts, say system, subsystem one, subsystem two, and then we say normally assume there's a factorization of the Hilbert space uh, uh, associated with each subsystem. And then can, uh, given any state, then we can trace out, say, the other uh, uh, subsystem to get the reduced density operator for subsystem one. And this row one, they essentially contains uh, uh, crucial quantum information regarding the system. Okay, all kinds of quantum entanglement correlations between one and two is encoded in row one. And the quantum information theory is just various method uh, to, 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 to extract information from this row one. And uh, so, so this whole, uh, in, uh, so, uh, uh, so normally we describe it, say, using uh, quant uh, 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 say entanglement entropy, Rayleigh entropy, et cetera. But, but all such kind of entanglement information can equivalently be characterized in terms of uh, properties of operator algebra of subsystem one. And the, but but this is uh, yeah but for the in, in this kind of situation this does not offer you any new insight so normally we don't talk about it okay so in this case the uh, uh, the, uh, the operator algebra in this region one yeah uh, yeah in this region one or two will be what von Neumann and we record the type one algebras but there are but when you go to system with an infinite number of degrees freedom then you can often happen the following situation because now you, you can have an infinite amount of entanglements. And due to that, you have infinite amount of entanglements, the, uh, such a factorization of the Hilbert space may not exist. 
And then that means we, uh, this standard language of using the reduced density operator and finding entropy or other quantity from it, it just no longer apply. Okay, the whole formalism just ca cannot be applied. So the standard strategy is to let's just regularize the system so that to make the system to be factorizable. Okay, so that's what we often do in quantum field theory. So even though you, you cannot factorize in quantum field theory, but we introduce some short distance cutoff, introduce something, a regularization, so that yeah, uh, they, they become factorizable, and then, uh, and then you can calculate the entanglement entropy, et cetera. Okay, so this has leads, led to tremendous amount of insight, give you lots of uh, uh, powerful results, but this may also miss important physics, which are intrinsically, uh, 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 does not depend on regularization. Okay, because here you always have to introduce some regular, uh, uh, regulator, and uh, uh, and some uh, uh, so when you introduce this regulator, you obscure certain properties. For example, are intrinsic. Say, for example, in the continuum, etc. Okay. And so now you uh, uh, now the algebra language then provides an intrinsic. Uh, and then, uh, 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 but if you use the structure of the operator algebras, and then the entanglement of the systems then can be probed intrinsically without introducing such regulators. Okay. So so that's the reason. Uh, uh, such kind of formalism can be very powerful. And uh, so for example, uh, uh, for the type two, when we my algebras, I will not go into details what we mean by type two, but let me just tell you that the, for type two algebras, uh, 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 it turns out you can introduce a renormalized reduced density operator. And then you can actually introduce a renormalized entropy, okay, uh, as still defined. So even though you have infinite entanglement, uh, you don't have factorization of the Hilbert space, but it turns out uh, the, uh, those things are mild enough, actually uh, you can introduce the renormalized quantity to describe it. But then you have more exotic type three algebras that even renormalized density operator or entropy does not exist. Okay. And so in this case for the type three algebras, then the only method we know so far, uh, uh, the entanglement can still be uh, proved by characterized by uh, a powerful formalism called modular flows. Okay, so um, yeah. So for questions we are often interested in, say for example, in relativistic quantum, quantum field theory, then there's a, a, a very general result that the local, uh, uh, local operate algebra in any local region R is actually type three one. So type three one is just uh, uh, one type of the uh, type three algebra. Okay. So for example, uh, 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 consider a very simple example. So, so consider just one plus one dimensional quantum field theory. Uh, uh, let's just divide, yeah, this is a single spatial slice that's divided into left half and the right half. And then now if you look at the, the operator, yeah, just say free scalar field theory or, or, or any theory you are interested. So if you look at the, the operators which are localized in the right region, they form an algebra. And it turns out that this operator algebra in the right region is type 3 one. Okay, uh, so this is just the one special example of this general statement. And this uh, uh, algebraic structure, uh, uh, type three one, for very important physical reasons. Okay, this is just not some kind of mathematical uh, uh, curiosity. So first is that this type three one structure encodes that in, in, in quantum field theory, in any state, in any finite uh, energy state, in any state, the entanglement between the right and the left are infinite, uh, uh, is infinite. Okay, uh, uh, this type three one uh, uh, capture this structure. But the, moreover, type three one captures the entanglement structure needed to have sharp causal structure in any state. So we know that when you have relativistic quantum field theory and we have a causal structure uh, uh, associated with say the, the operator, the commutator of the operator should vanish outside the light cone, etc. And uh, so any other type of algebras don't give you this kind of sharp causal structure. Only type three one, okay? So the type three one algebra is the one which give you this causal structure. And so that's the, uh, uh, there's no accident, somehow the uh, relativistic quantum field theory and given by this type three one. Okay, so 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 this is a very uh, quick, uh, yes. Can you say what you mean by the second one at the technical level? Yeah, yeah, technical level is rated just this, uh, um, yeah, I just say if you want to have the uh, uh, the commutators uh, to vanish, you will have some very uh, you, uh, you need to have very special structure. But say like 
to make that you could say there you need this half-sided modular inclusion. Is that what we're yeah, 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 it's related. Uh, the half-sided uh, including is one of the consequence of this. Uh, uh, but you can also uh, uh, argue from other perspective, say if you want to have the commutator to vanish strictly outside some region, exactly vanishes. And that requires very special structure. Yeah, uh, uh, type one just does not give it to you, type two does not give it to you, yeah. Good. Okay, so now let me say a few words about ADSFT duality. So, uh, uh, yeah, we know that the, uh, these are the equivalents between the Bach ADS gravity theory and the boundary CFT. And one statement of the duality is that there should be one to one correspondence between the quantum states of the two theories. Okay. So, in, uh, on the Bach side, we know that for certain uh, quantum states, when we take the uh, G Newton goes to zero limit, when you go to the semi classical limit, then recover classical geometry uh, under the quantum field theory in curved space time. Uh, and we have locality and sharp causal structure, et cetera. So, so it, it's a natural question to ask, how does those notions, okay, emergence, emerge, uh, emerges from the, uh, 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 this uh, uh, quantum gravitational theory? So right now we don't really have a description of a quantum state in, in, in a, a description of a general quantum state, say, say in quantum gravity, but, but now, To the, to the CFT side, we can ask, what is the structure leaded? Okay, so, so that in the angle to infinity the limit, somehow those lotions uh, uh, emerges, okay? Uh, 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 those lotions emerge. And uh, uh, so, so, so again, I emphasize angle to infinity is crucial because in order to define this kind, kind of concept in the sharp way, uh, in the mathematical precise way, and we need to take G Newton goes to zero limit. And so, so we want to understand what is the emerging physical and the mathematical structures that is responsible uh, for those kind of uh, geometric notions. Okay. And uh, so, so now let me say a few words regarding the large limit of the duality. So, so it's, uh, even though the statement I make is general, it's good to have some, uh, um, yeah, some toy uh, some specific example in mind. For example. The English for super young male theory with gauge group S U F. Okay, the large N will be the large rank of the gauge group. And so, uh, so turns out that in the large N limit, many states and operators they don't have well defined large N limit. Okay, uh, 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 so so certain states and operators, when you take angle to the limit, you can no longer uh, define them because this is a very special limit. Okay. And so the, uh, such because of that. This implies that the structure of the Hilbert space and operator algebra is actually undergo dramatic changes in the large N limit. So what we want to argue is precisely those dramatic changes are responsible for the emergence of those geometric notions. Yeah. So let me give you a philosophical uh, or analog, say of such kind of uh, 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 things can dramatic change in such kind of limits. Okay, so let's consider a familiar example. So let's just consider again, one dimensional uh, uh, quantum field theory so let's first put it on the lattice, okay? And when you put it on the lattice, and again, we can ask the question about the entanglement between, uh, yeah, and, uh, and then, yeah, if we can put it on the lattice, then we can take the lattice spacing A go to zero, and then we can uh, be, uh, be, we go to the continuum. So now let's ask the question about the entanglement between some region R and the, say, the region L, okay? So, so this is a familiar story we uh, uh, people in condensed matter work all the time, and the, uh, the uh, uh, you have a factorization of the Hilbert space, okay? Uh, uh, just the, the yeah, uh, it trivially factorize the Hilbert space, and then you can find say density, uh, reduced density operator, uh, you can find the entropy etc. And uh, this all related to the operator algebra in this lattice theory is actually type one algebra, our familiar uh, quantum mechanics algebra. But now. When you take the continuum limit, it turns out when you take a equal to zero limit, many states in your Hilbert, in your uh, in your uh, lattice Hilbert space, they have infinite energy. So when you take a equal to zero, and those states will uh, 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 drop out, okay, in your in your continuum Hilbert space. So Hong, to be clear, here we're working in finite volume, right? Um, yeah, uh, uh, it's easier. Uh, 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 it's easier. Say you put a finite volume, put some uh, uh, periodic condition. Yeah. 
Because there can be some other infrared issue. Yeah, there can be some other infrared issue. Yeah, yeah. But here I'm just emphasizing the uh, UV issue. That's right. So, so, uh, so when you take this limit, so many states in this theory actually they no longer uh, uh, survive they, uh, because the energy can go to infinity. It turns out those states which survive, okay, uh, those finite energy states, they all have infinite entanglements between right and L, okay. And so because of the decoupling of those factorized states, and now the algebraic structure changes. Okay, and now the algebra becomes type three one. Uh, as I mentioned, yeah, uh, type three one. And this is also responsible for that in the discrete case, actually there's no sharp light comp. Okay, if you look at the commentators between the operators, they're always some kind of exponentially small tail. Uh, uh, even very far away, uh, uh, far outside the light comp. There, uh, there can be some exponential small tails. So if you want them to be exactly vanish uh, as in the continuum limit, and then uh, 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 this type three one structure has to emerge in this limit. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, so let me uh, uh, so let me say a few words regarding the large n limit of the operator algebra. So the operator we say has a sensible large n limit. So if it's vacuum correlation function has a well defined large n limit. Okay, and uh, and so if you use this criterion. And in the end, we get a finite product of simple trace operators. And uh, so, um, and then, then, uh, then, if you look at the, uh, uh, yeah, those product of single trace operators, they form an algebra, let's say in a large n limit, and then we call them single trace operator algebra. So even though normally in in, in quantum field theory, uh, the operator algebra they independent of the states. Okay, so 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 you can define them just purely on uh, operator relations. But in order to define this uh, large n limit, turns out that this single trace operator algebra actually uh, uh, have some special features. For example, it becomes state dependent. Depend on the state which survive this large n limit, uh, the, the nature of this uh, uh, algebra can change dramatically. Okay, so, uh, so in taking the limit, you actually have to use the information about the state. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a, it's a simple explanation to to do this, but uh, uh, um, yeah, it, it takes like a few minutes, which I, uh, I don't really have time. So, uh, and another feature is that the single trace operators at different times uh, allow independence. Okay, so there's no equation motion. You can relate different single trace operators just within themselves. Okay, uh, within themselves. So, so, so if you uh, uh, use standard equation motion, uh, the Heisenberg equation motion. Uh, and they uh, they will take you outside the single trace or, 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 or sector. And so those uh, properties now will uh, play a crucial role, okay, in our understanding of the large n limit. Okay. Oh, what about the Schrodinger Dyson yeah. equations, which can have between those? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. Uh, uh, it depends. Uh, uh, yeah, you can formulate some kind of Schrodinger Dyson equation in the large n limit. Uh, here, I'm just looking at the leading order in the large n limit because they're all factorized. Uh, so it's like a free theory. Yeah. So there are no time, time equations. Uh, 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 there's a time, uh, there is time direction. It's just the, now at a different time, they're independent of each other. They're, uh, they're not related to each other. Well, thinking of the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so the single trace operator, they are labeled by both spatial location and the time. Right. Yeah, but uh, at the different time, they're no longer independent. Yeah, they're longer dependent. Yeah. Good. Can, can I clarify? So in, yeah. I, I just forget how this works. It works in the supersymmetric case. Yeah. Do you want to also restrict the single trace operators to be chiral VPS operators or something? No, you don't need to. No. Because uh, I guess, aren't there high dimension operators that, you know, when lambda is large, yeah, you have yeah. operators with traces of not that many phi's but have a very high scaling dimension? Yeah. Are yeah. We including those? Yeah. Yeah. We're including them. Yeah. Yeah. In principle, we can include them. Yeah, so okay. so uh, so for this general discussion, uh, uh, this can be at finite lambda. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. Right. yeah. I'm sorry. What about the Hamiltonian? Uh, the Hamiltonian? Yeah. So so yeah. So uh, yeah. Uh, it doesn't have a well-defined, right? It's divergent. Yeah. So so the Hamiltonian depends on how you normalize it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the standard Hamiltonian yeah. is defined with a factor n yeah. before it, so n times the trace, and that Hamiltonian is not well defined. But uh, but then you can divide it by n, 
uh, and you still get a well-defined overhead. Uh, that single choice overhead is defined. Yeah, it has a limit. Uh, it, it just that that overhead can no longer take you uh, to finite time. That overhead because it, uh, you divide by n, it can only take you infinitesimal time. Yeah, one over n all the time. Is that the reason why single choice operators are independent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of the reasons. Yeah, one of the ways to think about it. Yeah. Good. So, so now let me just summarize the uh, the general story regarding the ADS AFT at large n. So, so on the gravity side, we have the geometry, okay. And if you take the G Newton goes to zero limit, to lead the model, essentially we have three bulk fields, and uh, um. And then we can, uh, uh, from the free bulk field, we can uh, uh, say construct the Fox space. Okay, and then uh, we can look at the operate algebra on this uh, uh, Fox space. Okay. And uh, uh, and then, so so according to the duality, this uh, uh, geometry is corresponding to the semi-classical limit of some quantum state, which is some quantum state on the CFT. So on the CFT side, in the large N limit, say, we have one-to-one -one correspondence between the bulk fields and the single choice operators on the boundary theory. And, uh, and in the uh, uh, leading order, uh, angle to infinity, they become generalized free fields. Okay. So, so they have the same, so they depend on the same number of dimensions, okay? Because the free bulk field is defined on the single time slice. Because the bulk, you have a regular <clears throat> uh, time evolution. And uh, the generalized free field is defined for the full space time. So, so, uh, so they actually labeled by the same uh, 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 number of uh, parameters, and then using uh, uh, using the single trace operator algebra, and then you can build a Hilbert space around this uh, CFT state psi. So this is normally called this GNS Hilbert space, okay? And uh, and then and then uh, then uh, 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 state correspondence between the the bulk and the boundary tells you these two Hilbert space should be identified. And also, then the operator algebra in the uh, in this GNS Hilbert space will be identified with the bulk operator algebra. Okay, uh, so uh, so this is just the uh, the uh, the operator. Yeah, th uh, this is just a more abstract statement of the standard, say, uh, HKLL story. Okay. Sorry, let me just follow up a little bit more. So, yeah. So you agree that this rule makes sense at finite lambda? So. So how about lambda equals zero? Would you say that, that we still have a sharp fault causality at lambda equals zero? Maybe we do, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so so lambda equals zero. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, um, yeah. here I have, uh, here I have not talked about the causality yet. I'm just saying uh, to define this single choice over the algebra, uh, uh, you don't have to ask about the lambda. Yeah. That's yeah, true. yeah. later to have sharp light, cone, et cetera, then the lambda may play a role. I'm actually not sure. Right? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we don't know that question. It's an open question. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, but you will see the discussion that the lambda does not play an obvious role. Yeah, but it good. could still play some role. Yeah, it, 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 it's an open question. Yeah. No, no, it's also true that single three soft creatures can be expressed as creation and inflation operators. Right, right, yeah. So, which then by the definition normalizations might become generalized free field. What is the advantage of speaking of one or the other? You know, oh. why, why not speak of just creation and equation? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, I see. Okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can. Uh, if you express in term creation and annihilation operator, and that's the precise the way how you identify this two okay. Hilbert space. Okay. And, and and they become just uh, really generated by the same creation operator. So it's called the GNS construction. Yeah, 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 right, okay. right. Yeah, yeah, if you use the creation uh, and annihilation operator, and no, then you can such, create. It's not such, such a complicated thing to do. No, no, no. It's a it's a very simple thing to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah just GNS is a much more general language right. to talk about how you generate Hilbert space from algebras, mm -hmm. and uh, and in this specific case, it's very simple. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good. So so now with this preparation, essentially it's trivial, okay, to say there must be a duality for the box sub region, okay. So, so let's go uh, this way. So let's imagine you have a causally complete box, box space time region B. Again, we always work to the leading order in G Newton goes to zero limit. Uh, essentially, it's a quantum field in curved space time. Yes. What is the dimension of B here? Or can it be any subregion? <laughs> yeah, uh, so this is, will be a, uh, yeah, this will be a, a causally complete. So that means that this should have the same uh, number of space time dimension as the, uh, the full space time dimension. Oh, it's perfect. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the uh, um, yeah. Um, so not like coins of ABS. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is just the, the a, a diamond. Yeah, some kind of diamond, for example. Yeah. So let's just consider some some causally complete box space time region. Uh, this may or may not touch the boundary. And then then we can consider the box field operator algebra in B. Okay. So this is some type three one algebra, and it will be the sub algebra of the full operator algebra in the box. Okay, uh, so this is just the standard quantum field theory in curved space time. So that's the reason that this algebra is type 3 one. So now from the duality, from the fact that there's a one-to-one, -one, uh, 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 there's identification of this bulk operator algebra with the boundary operator algebra on this op uh, GNS Hilbert space, then immediately conclude, okay, there must be an emergent type 3 one algebra in the boundary theory Okay, so this tilde denotes the bulk operator algebra, and this uh, M psi denotes the boundary algebra that is identified with this YB tilde. Okay, uh, just from the duality, somehow uh, 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 something like that has to exist. Okay, uh, uh, just triviality uh, 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 from the uh, 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 from the um, yeah, and uh, and so this has to be some emergent types we want. Uh, 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 Okay, uh, so so we will talk about some examples later. Uh, 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 yeah, and conversely, uh, uh, it, it, it's a much more non-trivial statement, uh, we, uh, uh, which I have no idea whether this is true or not. But it's tempting to speculate somehow that for any emergent type three one subalgebra in the boundary theory, there exists some some bulk region whose algebra is identified with. And the reason uh, to uh, for such speculation is that. I was, uh, uh, as I was saying, hidden in any type three one algebra, there's some kind of causal structure. Okay, there's some kind of hidden Rindler there. Okay, so so we would like to imagine this somehow is related to some box space, uh, a box geometric region. Yes. So the idea that the operators get identified in this algebra, but also some kind of operator product on the bulk side gets identified with the operator product on the bound. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because if it's the same algebra, it's literally yeah. So the global algebra is the same. And then any sub algebra must be identified. Sorry, Hong. Yeah. You must have another restriction because I, I can just take the algebra for some region and conjugate it by an arbitrary unitary transformation. And that gives, gives me another algebra that's isomorphic to the first one. Mm -hmm. But it would be surprising if for an arbitrary unitary transformation, I could get something that uh, corresponds to a you know, reasonable region as well. Right, right. So, so, so if you do uh, arbitrary, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's a good question. So, uh, so, uh, so if you do arbitrary unitary transformation, yeah, then actually that takes you outside that GNS Hilbert space. So this is within that. Uh, 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 in the sense that in the gravity side, if you make a very large unitary transformation, that will back react to the geometry and take you outside that geometry. Well, I want it to be a unitary that is part of the the large N algebra. Yeah, and then that's okay. Yeah, but then there's still probably a lot of those, right? I can just do pick an arbitrary. Yeah, yeah. Then there's one to one correspondence of such unitary transformation on the boundary and in the bulk. You can just do them identically. Yeah, but most of them won't be geometric. Yeah, it, yeah, it doesn't have to be geometric. It has to somehow bulk. respect locality in order for what you said to be true. So, uh, so this identification of the algebra uh -huh. somehow must respect locality. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so somehow hidden in this boundary structure, uh, uh, this boundary uh, uh, algebra is the bulk locality. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so I will give you some indication of that. Yeah. If I make my causal diamond smaller and smaller yeah. and smaller, yeah. does that somehow affect the dimension of the boundary algebra? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, 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 indeed, uh, uh, that, uh, that limit could be subtle. Uh, uh, we don't know. Yeah. I just want it to be a point. Yeah. So we will identify the algebra corresponding to a point of bulk space. Then. Yeah, that limit certainly is not quite well defined. Yeah, uh, it, it's just like you always, it's just like in thermodynamics, uh, you always consider the region is big enough to consider uh, to contain, uh, uh, yeah, can be considered as a microscopic region. Good. So, so now I want to illustrate using an example that the property of such emergent type three one algebras can actually uh, uh, give you geometric notions like horizon times and causal structure. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so, uh, so example is the, this emergent times and horizon for internal black hole. So this is a familiar example uh, uh, in ADSFT 
which you have internal black hole uh, in the gravity side, and this, it should be dual to uh, a two copies of a CFT in the thermal field double state. And there's many uh, mysteries regarding this uh, identification. Uh, uh, for example, this boundary time stops at the event horizon, okay? And then, yeah, then, then, then how do you describe this F and P region, okay? And so, so how do we define, uh, how do you describe the cross-cut time? Okay. And uh, uh, um, yeah, and uh, uh, also uh, how, do you, how do we see the signature of the horizon? And the associated causal structure. And so, so, so now let's look at this question. <laughs> so at the finite end, so if you look at the incomplete for severe and mill series at the finite end, let's look. Yeah, here you have two copies of C, uh, CFT. Okay, and now each CFT, now each CFT become a subsystem. Okay, uh, and uh, so if you look at the operator algebra of the CFT R or CFT L. And then that's just the uh, type one volume algebra on the full CFT Hilbert space. Okay, uh, 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 so so the operator algebra on the full uh, on the full Hilbert space is always type one. Okay, it's always type one. And so uh, so in this case, you just have a, a, a standard story. But in the large limit, this algebra is not relevant. Okay, because as I mentioned, some operators they uh, uh, they drop out in the large limit. So in the IGN limit, we have to look at uh, the algebra generated by single trace operators in the CFTR. And this operator algebra, as I mentioned, actually depends on your state. Okay, depend on the, your, uh, depend on your state. So now the claim, which I, uh, there are various ways to justify it, is that if you are smaller than the Hawking page transition, okay, the temperature is slow, smaller than the Hawking page temperature, this algebra is actually type one. Volume algebra, uh, uh, just as at the finite end, it's a type one volume algebra. But if you greater than the Hawking page transition, and this becomes type three one volume algebra, and so so this temperature dependence is an example of the state dependence. Okay, because the, when you change the temperature, you change the state, and you, then you see the nature of the algebra uh, uh, change dramatically. Okay, the nature of the algebra change dramatically. Just need to clarify for the case in the beginning. You you refer to gauge invariant operators. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah, gauge. Then they are single trace. Hmm? Then they are single trace. Why why for finite m you wouldn't have single trace operators? No, no, in finite then you also uh, you also have single so, trace operators, but you also have much more complicated operators. The, the general ones, yeah. Yeah, I say you have an um, uh, operator of dimension n square. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, good. So now the so now. So now let's first just emphasize, uh, 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 consider, say, greater than the Hawking page temperature. And then now there's a lateral identification of such algebra. So on the gravity side, we can consider the bulk op operator algebra in the right and the left region. Okay, uh, they can de be defined just on the single coach mm -hmm. slice. Okay, I call them the M tilde R and M tilde L. And M tilde R corresponding to in the right half and M tilde L corresponding to the left half, okay? And, uh, and then, then the duality, uh, then the standard statement of the duality you didn't uh, 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 excite in terms of this algebraic language, is just the, uh, the single trace operator on the right, uh, right CFT now should be identified with M tilde R and ML uh, with M tilde L. Okay, and uh, again, this is just the standard HKL statement applied to the region outside the black hole. Okay, to the region outside the black hole. And now if you want to describe this kind of time evolution, okay, say evolve uh, your operators from this time, uh, from this Cauchy slice to a Cauchy slice like this. So that's, then this kind of identification is not enough. Okay, we have to uh, uh, have something new, okay? And so, so one thing to recognize is that from Bach point of view, when you evolve here to here, so this is just like some kind of automorphism of your algebra. The, because in the bulk, you have standard Hamiltonian evolution. Okay, so the algebra here uh, is it, it, completely equivalent to here, and, uh, and they're just rated by some automorphism. And so that means that the bulk time evolution now can be interpreted from the boundary theory just at, uh, as automorphisms of the union of the two algebras on the right and on the left. Okay, and now the question is just what kind of automorphisms of this boundary algebra actually corresponding to the bulk time evolution? 
And so, uh, so yeah, uh, uh, first let me emphasize just to identify this algebra does not tell you actually they are connected in the in the box. Okay, uh, uh, the identification uh, does not tell you actually there should be a future or past region. Okay, uh, it's only, uh, 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 yeah. Good, so, so without going into detail, let me just tell you the results. So it turns out, yeah, so we want to understand the, the boundary automorphisms of the union of the left and the right edge, but how does that relate to the box time evolution? So there's a very simple one which we uh, 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 understood uh, uh, all along uh, for a long time is that the uh, internal time, so threshold time in the right or left region are generated by HR minus HL. From the algebraic language, this is the modular flow okay, uh, of, this, uh, uh, of this algebra. Okay. But now if you want to look at this kind of uh, uh, evolution, uh, go to this kind of slice, turns out you have to use something called the, the half-sided modular flows. And this is something which is unique to the type 3 one algebra. Okay, it only happens for the type 3 one algebra. And, uh, and so this half-sided modular flow then can actually take you, say, outside this right region and the left region to future and the past region. So in a sense, that this uh, 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 you can say that uh, uh, half-sided module flow that generate the future and the right uh, future and the past regions, and in particular when you cross the horizon, okay, I, 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 I will not have time to go into detail. When you cross the horizon, you see the sharp signature of the horizon. Uh, you, you see the long analytic behavior under the flow. Okay, so the uh, existence of the horizon and the causal structure is reflected in the certain long analytic behavior. And such kind of long analytic behavior uh, is, uh, again, uh, unique to the type 3 one. It, 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 uh, this is the same kind of uh, 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 long analytic structure uh, 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 related to, in the continuum limit, uh, in the lattice theory, uh, when you're in continuum limit, uh, a sharp uh, uh, quarter structure, a sharp light converges. Yes? Could, could you just give us a heuristic description of what a half-sided modular is? Right, <laughs> that's a, a heuristic. A heuristic description uh, 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 takes a little bit time, but uh, but let me give you an analog of it. Okay, G give you an analog of it. Yeah, yeah. Consider just a render region. Yeah. yeah. Now, now imagine this is just a flat space time, uh, a Minkowski flat space time, uh, and then this is just a right render region. This is a left render region. And then, and then, uh, then that time we have the uh, uh, we have the um, the Rindler, uh, uh, we have the Rindler time, and then that corresponding to the uh, to the modular flow, and then in the Minkowski space we also have the light cone time, can take you from a point here, say move along the light cone, uh, to go to the future and the past region, uh, and that kind of uh, uh, evolution corresponding to uh, 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 this half-sided modular uh, 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 flow. Yeah, yeah, it's the it's the analog of the light cone time in the Rindler case. And why is that because you do this normal time evolution? Like, right, you want to only capture... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, somehow the uh, this kind of light con time is most natural. Be yeah, there's a, a, a some story behind it. Uh, uh, so, so this half it, to explain this half sided actually takes some effort to explain. <laughs> uh, and so this half sided structure itself, uh, it, it, it's very special. Uh, 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 already uh, uh, make the light con direction uh, special. Yeah. I think there's. Yeah. Some... Uh, but the ones you have, yeah, uh, 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 let me just make a comment. But the ones you have both the light con uh, direction, the U and the V direction, then you can just compose them to get the standard, the uh, Minkowski direction and the spatial direction. I mean, yeah. Maybe just a comment, like, so So the, if you take the operator, I don't know whether it's P plus or P minus, but the one that evolves you in that direction, you know, um, if you evolve forward, it preserves the algebra on the right, because yeah. anything on the right stays right. in the right if you evolve up this way, yeah. but if you evolve backwards, it doesn't. And so that's a kind of weird algebraic thing that you have a positive operator where you evolve. That's right, that's right. It preserves the algebra, but if you evolve in the other direction, it doesn't. And so quantum field theory just does that, but then it's a theorem that you need to have a, only a type three algebra can have uh, this kind of thing. I guess you can write it all very explicitly for free scale. Yeah, 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 yeah. For free scale, you can do, do work. Yeah, so that's what we do. So, uh, so in the gravity and in the field theory, uh, you can do this construction very explicitly. 
And of course, in the render law, you can uh, for standard render law free theory, you can do it explicitly. And even for this black hole situation, we can also do everything explicitly. Yeah, good. So, so again, goes back to this question. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, I'll go back to this question. So, so above the Hawking page transition, we have this type three one structure, and then you essentially recover the causal structure of the special space time. Okay, including the signature of the horizon. And uh, uh, there's a more refined probe of the causal structure. Say, say, yeah, the light cone. You can actually uh, uh, not not only the core, uh, not only the horizon. You can see more refined, uh, finer structure of the light cone. But now, if you consider the below the Hawking page transition, then you have still a, a standard type one algebra. Then in this case, you actually have two disconnected geometry. Okay, and uh, and because the uh, because, so this type three one is re uh, uh, responsible for the emergence of this Rindler structure near the horizon, okay? Uh, if you below the Hawking page, there's no such kind of, you have type one, uh, there cannot be such kind of Rindler structure, okay? And so you only have this disconnected uh, space time, okay? Yeah, so, uh, and so this is the, uh, 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 I would say this is a more precise way to talk about whether the space time are connected or not than ER equal to EPR. Uh, be, uh, be, uh, because of the, yeah. Okay, yeah, let me just very quickly uh, just say how now you de uh, uh, describe this general Bach region. Now let's consider safety in the vacuum. So let's consider the algebra of single trace operators uh, within this time band. So as I mentioned, that the operator algebra at different time are independent, okay? And so now uh, let's imagine the, uh, you consider the operator within this time band. So it turns out you can argue that the, uh, the operator algebra in this time band is dual to the back operator algebra in this uh, called the spherical window region. Imagine, uh, so, the, uh, so the back is a solid cylinder, uh, so there's a, a circle direction. And then uh, uh, there's a sphere direction, and then and then you just consider this wedge, and then you uh, rotate uh, around the sphere. Okay, and turns out you can argue that this algebra is actually dual to the algebra in the this shaded region. Okay, but now you can look at the commutant of this algebra. So the algebra uh, the algebra uh, 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 consists of operators which commute with all uh, every operators in this algebra. So the commutant algebra then then you can argue is actually dual. To the physics in this diamond, okay, uh, to the to, uh, to the operator algebra in the diamond, and so this way, so this y which corresponds to the commutant of a prime does not have any geometric interpretation on the boundary theory. Okay, it's just some commutant of some uh, th this a have some geometric uh, 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 picture, uh, but this one does not. Okay, and such kind of operator uh, and the algebra give rise to this kind of picture. And again, you can. Try to generalize this black hole story to this context. Say now, suppose we have a, so now suppose we have some boundary algebra is dual to the bulk operator algebra in this region B, and then how do we describe various notions of time, and uh, and the, the causal structure, etc. And then now we can say that the story we see for the black hole case should be general. <laughs> say there's some interior time of B, uh, then described by modular flow. And then there's some global time which described by half-sided modular flow, and then the causal structure from the non-analytic behavior. And also in principle, if I load the algebra in the boundary theory, I can in principle reconstruct this bulk region, okay, including all its night cons, et cetera. Okay, so so I'm running out of time. So let me just uh, uh, skip the uh, uh, the rest part. Okay, uh, let me just try to very quickly go to the uh, go to the end. Does it construct just the conformal structure or the ADS metric itself? Mm? We can reconstruct just the conformal structure of the light cones or like the actual metric. Yeah, so uh, uh, a lot, uh, uh, yeah, at the moment it's not the metric. It, it, it's more like the causal structure. Yeah, given the geometry, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I have some examples. Uh, with, yeah, yeah, given the geometry, uh, and you can find the region of that, uh, uh, find that region which due to that boundary edge. Yeah, but 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 you may imagine uh, uh, in the future with more powerful technique, we may may be able to even uh, reconstruct the metric. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me just very quickly go to the conclusion. Yeah. 
Okay, so, so here I give a, a framework for describing the emergence of local regions, different notions of time, coastal structures in the Nigerian limit. And so we expect many features to survive at a small but finite Newton, okay? But, uh, uh, which we currently like a precise language to talk about. So here I want to make a, 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 a philosophical analog. So we know that say, for example, in statistical physics, uh, if you want to describe phase transition, and the phase transition, you can only describe it precisely mathematically in the thermodynamic limit. Okay, you have to take a limit and then various non-analytic behavior emerges, uh, uh, which you can define sharply as phase transition. But, 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 but of course, in real life, we observe phase transition now. We, we, we always have a finite volume. Okay, so, so that means that kind of uh, 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 infinite volume language actually works in the finite uh, volume pretty well, okay? So we expect many of these features, somehow they will survive. Uh, 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 small, just now they ha uh, uh, you have to wiggle a little bit. It just, uh, we currently don't have a precise language how, what things you should wiggle and what kind of things you should uh, will survive, okay? But, but by understanding how you go away from this uh, Nigerian limit, uh, and that should uh, uh, give us such a precise language. So, so for example, there have been uh, a work to describe uh, a recent work that, uh, uh, that, that describes that when you include perturbative corrections, dilutin corrections, and then uh, or, or or in some other situation, you can go to uh, become type two, and uh, eventually in this situation at finite dilutin we should see type one, and how somehow when you relax dilutin, somehow the physics uh, what kind of physics you need to incorporate that somehow this algebraic structure changed from type three to type two, then to type one. And again, that reflects uh, uh, somehow the, uh, uh, the entanglement structure uh, 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 of the system. And it's those entanglement structure which is reflected in those kind of space-time structure. So, so also we hope that the, uh, uh, this kind of framework can be used to understand say flat space or de space space-time, et cetera. There have been some, uh, um, yeah, for example, some work done in, uh, in DC. Yeah, so I will stop here. Any questions? Um, yeah, so, uh, so we, we do already have a way of um, explicitly writing down reconstructing the causal structure outside of the event horizons using emergence structures as large as singularities of the uh, large point correlator. So, Sorry, you say we. We do have like, an explicit protocol for getting causal structure outside of horizons, mm. time horizons, um, right. from these singularities and time-like separation that are emerging in the large end limit. Mm -hmm. right. um, so what I'd like to understand is, uh, what, and I'm have a take on this, um, whether you can understand how that is related to the story about the, the algebra, since you're talking about emergent causal structure, and it's a sort of an if and only if with the singularity structure of the like, high point correlator. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, so those information about the correlators is encoded uh, uh, here. Yeah, it's encoded here. Uh, 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 so that is the uh, kind of more mundane part of the story, in the sense is that, uh, yeah, for example, for the uh, for the reading outside the horizon, uh, you, you use HKLL story, which I think. Uh, well, HKLL doesn't give you the metric, but you can get the metric of normal and normal factor just from the singularity. So right, right. How yeah. Can we see that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 that aspect is the same. Uh, so outside the horizon is more or less the same. Uh, you can just use the standard story, and uh, uh, you can translate a, sing uh, 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 a bulk operator in terms of boundary operator. Then the singular, then the causal structure of the bulk operator, then just immediately translate into that. Yeah, uh, uh, David has paper. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, HKR has paper in that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think Nana is asking for. So yeah, there, there's this old story about how you have these correlators that become more singular at large end. But yeah. maybe there could be an algebraic interpretation. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Because the you can I mean you can actually yeah, this, this correlator becoming singular actually gives you the metric of the overall function. Right. So, so you don't need the like a smearing kernel or, or you know to do the reconstruction. Right. So yeah, so so the algebra, uh, so this kind of classification of volume algebra, they give you rather rather, I would say they give you rather um uh, uh, a broad information. Uh, and they they tell you the entanglement structure, but but they don't necessarily tell you the details of your theory. The, the detailed structure. Uh, so uh, uh, so so those structure, for example, uh, uh, those causal structure related to the 
uh, entanglement, etc. And you can see it from here. Uh, uh, so the more detailed structure, you uh, still you have to see from correlation functions, from the standard OPE structure, etc. Because that needs large lambda, right? Which, which but that doesn't means doesn't that large lambda. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so, so that structure uh, 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 is encoded, but but the classification of the volume algebra, the, the volume algebra itself, they don't care about those information. Uh, they give you a rather uh, broad information. Yeah. Yes. Simon. Yes. Yeah. We are bulk observers. Hmm? We are bulk observers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Are you suggesting somehow? By awarding emergent times, that the time we experience could be in some sense related to modular flow of some kind of. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We not normally do this for uh, normal thermal systems, normal quantum systems. Yes. If you take the modular Hamiltonian of the air in this room, yeah. it doesn't know a lot about, about for example, this. There's no position in this room. But I'm telling you, this room has, has so little exposure to short distance physics. You cannot use it to do uh, particle physics. It's not really the Hamiltonian of this room. Uh, 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 the uh, Hamiltonian uh, of this room is not really close to the Hamiltonian. Uh, uh, sorry, I don't quite understand your question. Because we're not in the ground state. We're, uh, not, really in a, we're not in perfect thermodynamic corridor. System. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, 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 the, modular, uh, the modular flow can be defined for any state. Yeah, but it is very different from the Newtonian that we actually experience that describes the time we experience. It's not clear. It's not clear they're different. Yeah. Did you check in some examples? Do you have examples where you check where you use a Newtonian that's not in exactly a thermal state, but is is more like a state that we can physically prepare? Um, of course, those things are very hard to do. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, you see, uh, uh, I'm not claiming. Okay, uh, uh, I'm not claiming uh, uh, that modular Hamiltonian, uh, uh, the modular time. Uh, is the precise the local time we experience. Uh, I'm just saying that modular time can give rise to some time, okay, which describes the internal uh, evolution uh, and uh, uh, may uh, also be able to def uh, describe evolution which goes outside this, uh, uh, say, this region. And, uh, and how that relates to the geometric time which we experience, that's a non-trivial question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that uh, uh, that time itself can be immediately identified with some uh, modular flow. Uh, there's still some relation between them. Yeah, just that flow can uh, give rise to a time or a number of times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's thank Kong again. <laughs> some more chairs. There's a lot of space here. And we're going to move to the next speaker.